Hi everyone, so we've covered a lot of topics in classification, so let's move on to regression. Uh, let's start with this example. I don't know if you're familiar with BMI, with Body Mass Index. Basically, this is a measure of how obese you are or if you have overweight. It's a very simple formula. So this is the weight in kilograms divided by the height in meters, all squared. It's a kind of density per surface or something like that. Okay, the point of this chart was trying to show that BMI above 25, which is the threshold set by, by medical doctors to say if you are overweight or not, is producing a lot of false positives and false negatives. So remember all these things that has to do with classification. Basically, if you are above 25, you are classified as obese, but sometimes this is not true. And the, the, the real measure of this is body fat. So forget about classification and rock curves and all that. And let's try to figure out if we can try to guess what is our percentage of body fat if we know our body mass index. Why is this interesting? Because you can weigh yourself using a scale and you can measure yourself using a ruler. And this is something that you can calculate even at home. But body fat is really hard to, to compute. Actually, you need x-rays or some, some advanced equipment. So this is the project that we are going to start today. And this is going to help us to introduce different concepts. So basically, the, the variable that we want to predict is called the output. And we're going to distinguish between the model, which is very smooth line here, and the error. Error is everything that is not exactly on top of this line. Sometimes we talk about signal and noise, and, and a good model is something that reduces the noise up to minimum and try to maximize the signal. Okay? So the output basically is the number of points in which we haven't seen anything yet, the signal is the function that we are trying to plot, that we're trying to uh, use to explain this relation between two variables. And the noise is the residual, is something, everything that doesn't fall into this line. Mathematically, we could write something like this. So we're going to start with just one output. We have a function that can be linear or nonlinear. And we're going to call regressors all the parameters that are here. And this is the error. And this is not um, a measurement error. This is really important. This epsilon has to do with all the uncertainty in, in the world, not, not just something that is related to the measurement or the model, sometimes it's related to all the things that we don't know about this problem. Okay, the first thing that we have to ask ourselves is what type of model are we going to use? So we're going to start with very simple model, linear regression models, in which this line is going to be replaced by the straight line. But of course we have more sophisticated things like polynomial regression, we are going to talk about neural networks again, radial basis neural networks, support vector machines for numerical variables, spline, generalized additive models, and so on and so forth. So there is a myriad of things that we can do here. And also we have to talk about residuals. So what is the error looks like? Is the error Gaussian? Do you have long tails? Do you have any outliers that are changing the predictions? What are the correlations in, in the errors? And so on and so forth. So the two more important questions that we have to ask here is, the first one is, is my model good? And this has to do with the structure of the model, linear versus nonlinear. What are the relevant input variables, the complexity of the approximator? So for instance, if we are talking about polynomial regression, what's the, the best choice for the order? And in the case of forecasting, for instance, what are the coefficients of the error function? And we're going to call all these questions, all these problems, model identification. Okay, so here we are concerning what's the best model to uh, try to produce my, my data. But there are other questions that are also important. So is my model significant? So are those inputs explanatory enough? Uh, are, are significant the coefficient that we're obtaining, meaning that maybe we have a good model, but maybe these parameters are not very relevant. And the thing that matter mo the most at these first stages is the analysis of the residuals. So generically, when we discuss all these topics, we talk about model diagnosis. And I'm going to show you how to do all these things in R. Specifically, we're going to focus on things related to the structure of the model and significance of the fitting, analysis of the residuals. And one of the most important things that actually we've covered before in other videos in classification is how to test what variables are more important. So where the input variables are more relevant to the fit. So let's uh, stop here and let's begin with the first type of regression. It's the most, uh, let's say, extended one and for good reason is linear regression. 